hi hi welcome back guys thank you for clicking so we will check out this video together guys titled eight scientists have researched the black stone and one of the scientists that researches black stone converted to islam after he discovered this from the black stone wow let's find it out Hajar Aswat is a sacred stone located in the eastern corner of the Qubit building known as the Kaaba. The stone has a long history and is an object of admiration for scholars around the world. Nice. The Hajar Aswad stone has also invited debate and speculation about its origins for centuries. Yeah. Secular historians oh. claim that the Hajar Aswad is a stone that fell from outer space. Meanwhile, many geologists around the world have tried to study the type and nature of this stone in an attempt to find out more about the scientific nature of Hajar Aswad. Some of the world's leading researchers have also conducted in-depth studies to research the origin of the Hajar Aswad stone. Well, in this video, we will explore the scientific studies that researchers have conducted in search of answers about the mysterious origins of this stone, so that we can gain a deeper understanding of this phenomenon, as the Hajar Aswad stone continues to be a mystery to this day. Here's the video. Hajar Aswad has a rich history and myths, making it a very important stone in the development of Islam, from the time of Prophet Abraham to the time of Prophet Muhammad. Hajar Aswad is believed to be a stone from heaven that was brought by Prophet Adam when he descended to earth. Over time, the Hajar Aswad stone deteriorated and was broken into several pieces in medieval times. However, the pieces of the black stone were later put back together and inserted into a silver frame fastened to a stone. Historically, the Hajar Aswad stone has undergone color changes. According to a hadith of the Prophet Muhammad, he said, a black stone came down from heaven, and it was whiter than milk, but the sins of the sons of Adam turned it black. In this understanding, the black color of Hajar Aswad is believed to be a reflection of the sins of mankind. The government of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia has even released a 49,000 megapixel high-resolution photograph of the Hajar Aswad. This photo allows anyone to clearly see every detail of this sacred stone. Mm, nice. Inside the Grand Mosque, there are eight clusters of Hajar Aswad, which are attached to a larger stone and framed by silver. But there are also other fragments of Hajar Aswad claimed to be in Istanbul, Turkey. One of them is in the Suleymaniye Grand Mosque. In addition to these two places, it turns out that other fragments of Hajar Aswad are in one of the museums in England. Why are the fragments of Hajar Aswad in England? Here are the facts. The process of taking the chunks began when some scientists read the news about the virtues and wonders of the Hajar Aswad stone. In the UK, there are three fragments of Hajar Aswad, which are kept for research purposes. As a very special stone and sacred to Muslims, the Hajar Aswad stone has always attracted public interest, especially researchers in the field of geology. Over time, various experts have conducted research to seek a deeper understanding of the physical characteristics of the Hajar Aswad stone. They also wanted to understand the geological processes that may have been involved in the formation of this stone. Of course, among researchers, there are many different views and opinions about Hajar Aswad. One of the researchers, Richard Burton, finally pronounced the creed after doing extensive research on the stone. In the research on the origin of the Hajar Aswad stone, one of the hypotheses proposed was that the stone came from a meteorite. Wow. This view was based on a catalog of meteorites compiled by G.T. Pryor, who categorized the Hajar Aswad stone as an aerolite or siderolite, a type of meteorite rich in iron and silicates. Pryor argues that the Hajar Aswad stone is an aerolite meteorite, a meteorite that is more like an ordinary stone and is not dominated by iron and nickel, as is the case with meteorites that we commonly know. Anthony Hampton and a team of geologists from the University of Oxford also studied the local chili sauce collected from where the Hajar Aswad stone is located. They found rare amounts of iridium and cone fragments in the samples. 
The rare geological find, which is known to have formed in the Bendrock beneath a meteorite impact crater, was discovered by Paul Parch, a curator of mineral stones during the Austrian-Hungarian Empire, who published the first comprehensive report on black stone in 1857. Wow in which he suspected that the Hajar Aswad stone was a fragment of a meteorite that fragmented about 6,000 years ago. However, this hypothesis has been the subject of tremendous debate, as there are discoveries that state that the Hajar Aswad stone has the property of floating in water. This is contrary to the characteristics of meteorites in general, which have a high density, so they will sink if put into water. In 950, the governor of Mecca, Abdullah ibn Makim tested the stones suspected to be the Hajar Aswad stones, stolen by the Ismailia Karametha sect 22 years earlier, and found that they could indeed float in water. This finding shattered the view that Hajar Aswad was a meteorite. In addition, all scientists have not found meteorite rocks with the same characteristics as the Hajar Aswad stone, so this stone cannot be definitely attributed to a meteorite. Nonetheless, this hypothesis remains one of the viewpoints in the research on the Hajar Aswad stone. And researchers continue to study the properties and characteristics of the stone to gain a clearer understanding of its origin. Another hypothesis that has been proposed in research on the origin of the Hajar Aswad stone is that it is a volcanic rock, specifically pumice. These rocks are formed from volcanic eruptions that produce magma with a composition rich in silicon, CO2, or acid igneous rocks. Acid igneous rocks are generally light or bright in color as opposed to dark, wet igneous rocks. A study conducted by the United States Geological Survey said, Hajar Aswad is probably obsidian from a lava flow common in one of the Herat or volcanic fields found on the western Arabian coast. Meanwhile, researchers Robert S. Dietz and John McCone from the Department of Geology at the University of Illinois in the United States said, Hajar Aswad is not derived from meteorite rock, but is a ring stone, which is one of the minerals formed in the earth. He said, diffusion bands and other physical appearances indicate that it is agate. In this context, some scientists note that the Hajar Aswad stone has similarities with pumice. Pumice rock generally has a light or bright color and is mostly composed of pores that result in a very low density less than one gram per cc. This phenomenon is in line with reports that the Hajar Aswad stone can float in water. Pumice stones are generally formed in violent explosive eruptions with an eruption scale equal to or greater than five volts, one of the characteristics of which is to produce a caldera. Such volcanoes are common in Indonesia, so it is not surprising that pumice appeared in the 1883 Krakatau eruption or the 1815 Tambora eruption. However, there are challenges in attributing the Hajar Aswad to pumice in the context of the geology of the Arabian Peninsula. Volcanism in the area generally produces wet igneous rocks, not acidic igneous rocks that produce pumice. Volcanoes in the Arabian Peninsula fall under the category of basaltic volcanoes, which produce dilute basaltic magma and tend to form wide volcanoes with low conical peaks. In this context, it is difficult to find a connection between the Hajar Aswad stone and the volcanic rocks of the Arabian Peninsula. Although calderas are found in some areas, such as Jebel Salma, these calderas were formed about 580 million years ago, and they are too old to have produced pumice. Thus, the possibility that the Hajar Aswad stone is a ring stone, or even a volcanic rock, becomes less supportive in this study. Volcanism in the Arabian Peninsula did not produce significant pumice, and there is no evidence to support the existence of explosive eruptions on a scale large enough to form pumice like the Hajar Aswad stone. Therefore, although the volcanic rock hypothesis has been proposed to link Hajar Aswad to pumice in the geological context of the Arabian Peninsula, it is still difficult to confirm. Wow, Further research is needed to better understand the origin and physical characteristics of this sacred stone. Some scientists say it is the oldest rock in the world, although it is not known exactly how old it is. 
In general, scientists can determine the age of rocks through carbonization and lead techniques for fossils, the age of the subsoil, and other related matters. But in fact, there is no parameter that can explain how old the Hajar Aswad stone is. Another fact is that no one has ever found a rock like the Hajar Aswad stone. So it can be concluded that this rock is not from the earth, but also not a fragment of a meteor rock. This is because its density is very different from that of any other rock in the universe. In an effort to find a better answer about the origin of the Hajar Aswad stone, another hypothesis emerged, stating that this rock may be a type of impactite. Impactite is a rock formed by the collision of celestial bodies at very high speeds and with enormous energy. A Swedish geologist and paleontologist named Elsabeth Thompson from the University of Copenhagen expressed her views on Hajar Aswad. Thompson emphatically stated that Hajar Aswad is not a meteorite, but an impactite. On the mainland of Saudi Arabia, the product of the impact, more commonly called impactite, can be found at the location of the Wolver meteor crater, about 550 kilometers southeast of the city of Riyadh. He explained, the Wabar structure, where rocks similar to Hajar S water found, generally consists of white glass blocks containing silicon. Some parts even have blackish sheets. Thompson's theory is quite interesting, as it matches the description in a hadith that describes Hajar Aswad as a stone whiter than milk. The impactite has a hollow structure, which can cause gas to be trapped inside the rock, allowing it to float in water. This is consistent with experiments showing the floating properties of the Hajar Aswad stone. However, upon further analysis, Thompson's hypothesis was disproved by the finding that the Weber structure was formed in 1704, just a few centuries ago. This is much younger than the mass construction of the Kava, which took place about 40 centuries ago. Therefore, it is difficult to associate Hajar Aswad with the Wilbur structure. It can thus be concluded that the Hajar Aswad stone is neither a meteorite, nor a volcanic stone, nor an impactite. Although several studies have been conducted, the mystery of the origin of Hajar Aswad still remains an interesting topic of research. However, what is clear is that Hajar Aswad is a stone that has sacred value in Islam. Prophet Muhammad himself honored the stone by kissing it. This shows how important it is to respect the religious values represented by the Hajar Aswad stone. In the confusion and uncertainty of science, it is very important for Muslims to maintain the honor and privilege of the Hajar Aswad stone. Hajar Aswad remains a symbol of piety, purity, and obedience in the spiritual journey of Muslims. Hopefully, this video can be useful for all of us. Thank you. Wow, guys. So that means the black stone is close to the Kaaba. Like, I'm so stunned at, at the way people go there in their numbers just to go and have a, you know, touch. I be have a feeling of the black stone getting to, you know, it's, it's just shocking, guys. I, I don't even have to even put it because just imagine getting to the end of the video the way they were all pushing each other all because they want to go near to the stone like that stone actually carry power i don't know like they said it's true abraham because of his sin the sin of abraham there was a stone that was cast down it was a black stone so from there uh muslim you know um actually put the stone inside one silver container i don't know if it's silver i don't know what to, i can only call it a container no silver stuff like that and because they know that human sin we sin a lot so it's a is a is a moment of you going there to acknowledge god even though you've sinned against god you going to look at the black so will make you you know like you understand so it's what's for i've reacted to this kind of video before but i'm still trying to learn more about the black stuff because i'm still not getting it very clear the essence of that black stone, what it does in human life, what power it carries. I'm still trying to understand. But in the beginning of the video, I noticed this guy collected one white scarf or one white cloth from from the crowd. I don't know if that's what they used to clean the silver stuff of the black stone. 
as a non-Muslim, I'm still trying to understand. Um, this video let us understand that millions or thousands of people keep on going to that black stone just to do their research and understand more about the stone. And there's one particular stone that when you throw inside the water, the stone floats. That is a very beautiful stone. Like I'm sure that kind of stone is very rare. It's very rare. And what's the usefulness of that stone? I want to know why it is, you know, I don't know how to put it. In Islam, why is that people acknowledge that stone? Uh, it, it seems it carries a lot of meaning. That's what I can say. It seems it's carries, but I want to know what, what it means. Like this stone, I, I don't know if I'm being confused by what I'm saying because me myself, I'm, I'm still trying to get to understand this whole thing because I saw people in their numbers gathering around the cabal because you want to look at the black stone and so what power does it carry what's the meaning of the black stone i need to get to know more about that but that was a beautiful one at the end of the video one of the scientists converted to islam because of i research on the black stone thank you so much for watching guys i'll see you in the next one